Hey everybody, it's Lon Seib, and we're back with part two of our three-part series on Synology Surveillance Station, which takes a network-attached storage device like this from Synology and converts it into a security camera server like this, uh, completely free of charge. It's a free app that's available on every one of these Synology NAS devices. In part one, we covered what it was. Uh, in this edition, we're going to look at how to install it and how to add cameras to the mix. And in our next video, we'll look at some of the more advanced settings like motion detection and uh, some other things as well. Now, I do want to mention in the interest of full disclosure, this is a paid sponsorship from Synology. They suggested things to cover in this series of videos, and they're also reviewing this content before it is posted. All right, so let's begin first with the installation process, which is very easy. Now, if you have uh, set up your Synology disk station, you know you have a web-based control panel like this one. Uh, you've also probably found the package center already. So all you need to do is click on the package center, and they have everything organized by the different types of apps you can install. The easiest way to find surveillance station is to click on security over here, and then you'll see surveillance station is one of the available options that you can install on your particular NAS device. And all you have to do is click the install button on it, uh, a few minutes and then surveillance station will be ready to go. Now the cool thing about how all of this works is that this does not disable the other features of your Synology disk station. So it will still work as a web server. If you have uh, WordPress or something running on it, it'll also continue to serve files to your network and do all the multimedia stuff that you're doing. Uh, this is just another application that can run on top of your Synology operating system to add additional features to it. Now, before I started recording today's video, I did get a wireless camera set up in my living room. And uh, one of the cool things about Surveillance Station is that it supports about 5,000 different cameras. But that also means uh, there's about 5,000 different ways to get those cameras connected to your network initially. And they have to be on your network uh, for your Synology NAS device to be able to connect to it. So I do recommend uh, that you get your cameras connected with a static IP. Uh, most cameras should allow you to set the IP address manually in their setup applications. Uh, some routers allow you to do that after the fact as well. So for the example, the camera that I set up upstairs, uh, I've now got it connected to my network. I happen to be using a Synology router in the house, and they actually make this process very easy. So I've got my two uh, cameras here selected, and I can just add to address reservation. And what this means is that every time those cameras uh, get up on my network, they will get the same IP address every time. And that will make it a lot easier for the server in here to find them, because uh, the way this works is that your disk station will connect directly to those cameras, not the other way around, that it needs to know where they are on the network. Okay, so now that we have the IP camera on the network, we need to go into our surveillance station software and configure it. And you do that by clicking on uh, the IP camera icon here. Now, before we go further, I do want to mention that there's a couple different ways to uh, manage your surveillance station. So you can connect to your NAS device with a web browser like we were doing before. Uh, but there is also now with Surveillance Station 8.0, a native Windows and a native Mac client for Surveillance Station. And those will perform a little bit better than the web version will. So that's what we're using here. You can find the Synology Surveillance Station client on the Synology website at Synology.com. You just go over to Support, go over to the Download Center, you select the type of NAS device that you have, and then uh, you will see the uh, Surveillance Station client towards the bottom of the screen, and you can download the Windows or the Mac version. The Windows portable version is something that you can install on a, a USB stick or other kind of portable storage. So if you are away from uh, your home computer, you can check it on the road, and all you have to do to connect is just type in the IP address of your disk station and click sign in and you can do it locally like I'm doing here uh, or do it over the internet. So you saw that I clicked on IP camera and now what I'm going to do here is just click on add and what's cool is that uh, the surveillance station will actually uh, automatically, in many cases, uh, find these cameras on the network. So if you don't happen to know the IP address initially, uh, you can click on the little search icon here, and it will then uh, search throughout your entire network to find it. Now, one of the things I've discovered is that uh, some cameras are compatible even if uh, the Synology supported cameras tab here isn't finding them. So for the cameras that we're using uh, actually will be discovered via this general interface thing. And as you can see here, uh, we have two cameras that it found on the network. Uh, 195 is the one we just installed earlier, so I'm going to click OK here, and it's going to fill in this information. Uh, likewise, if you set up that static IP, you could just type in uh, the IP address on here. And uh, what I'm going to do now is just type in the uh, username and password for that camera. I'm going to click on Test Connection to see if it finds it on the network, and we're going to let that uh, run real quick. It's going to try to log into that camera, and you can see we got a checkbox next to it, and we can click Finish here, and it's also going to give us a preview of the 
the camera as well. So I'm going to click finish here. It's going to add that camera to our mix. And now we will have two cameras on our Synology home surveillance station here. Now, because we can use different brands of cameras with the Synology surveillance station, we can configure them individually as well, uh, or actually batch them up if we wanted to. But I'm gonna do this one individually. So I have our new camera here connected. I'm going to click on edit here and uh, bring up the uh, editing screen. Now, the first thing I'm going to do is just rename it to living room so I know which one I'm looking at here. And then I'm going to go over to the video tab here and there's a bunch of different options for me to look at. So uh, the first thing you'll see here is the type of video format that it supports. This camera supports H.264, and you can also set what audio formats are available also. So cameras that offer more features will give you more options here. I believe it also supports H.265 video for cameras that support that, but uh, this one is limited to uh, H.264. Now, stream profile is an interesting one because uh, you can actually set up two different streams with two different resolutions. So I'm going to set up balanced here as stream two. I'll talk about the difference between high quality and balanced in just a second, but uh, stream one is going to be our high quality stream. And as you can see, I have the option to go up to 10 ADP on that, uh, which I'm going to do. I also have the ability to set the frame rate on here also. And this is an important decision to make for a couple of reasons, because uh, the higher the frame rate, the more space these recordings are going to take on your hard drives installed on your NAS device. So you have to kind of think about uh, what amount of fluid motion you need versus uh, what kind of storage space that you have. So typically 15 to 20 frames per second is fine, but if you want a, a smooth 30 frames per second recording, you have the option to do that. Just know it's going to uh, occupy a lot more disk space in the process because really going from 15 frames per second to 30 uh, might actually double the amount of storage you need per minute uh, depending on uh, what's going on in the scene. So we're just going to go with, with the happy medium here of uh, 20 frames per second. Uh, your bitrate control, at least on this camera, is limited to variable, but there are uh, more advanced settings perhaps in other cameras that you can go with. And because I want this high quality, I'm going to set the image quality to highest. Now stream two is going to be our uh, secondary option here that we're going to set up at a lower resolution. So this one we're going to limit to 640 by 480. Uh, the camera that I'm using does send two different streams through the network, so that is uh, why we have that option. And the second stream just is a lower resolution. Uh, we're gonna maybe set this one to 15 frames per second. And again, we'll leave the uh, high quality uh, settings on there. So now we need to think about recording because the entire reason for having a security server is to save video onto our Synology disk station here. So I'm still in that uh, same editing camera interface here. We're going to go down over to the recording settings option here on the side. And as you can see here, we've got a whole bunch of things to think about. So uh, right now it's got uh, the option to save a video every X number of minutes. And uh, right now mine is set to save a video every 30 minutes. So what it's doing is it's recording continuously and then every 30 minutes it's going to uh, basically make a break in that file and save it to the disk so I can uh, run it on the mobile app that we looked at in the last video. So there's a uh, interval in which it will save the full video file that it's recording. And you can change that to something as low as five Five minutes or something as large as uh, 240 minutes. But just from the, for the sake of uh, sanity, sometimes having things broken out into 30 minute increments makes a lot of sense. Now pre-recording and post-recording are related to motion events and we're going to cover motion detection in more detail in the next video. But uh, in a nutshell, what can happen is uh, you can have it record only when something happens in front of the camera. But you might want to see what happened a few seconds before that motion event was triggered and maybe things happening a few seconds afterward. And that is what pre and post recording means. So I could set it, for example, to give me 30 seconds before and maybe 25 seconds after or something if I wanted to do that. Uh, that's an option you can set on here. Although, uh, if you have a lot of space and stored on your NAS device, my recommendation is just to allow it to record everything so you can get a full context for uh, what's going on in and around your home or office. And a good example of that is what we did in the overview video where we saw the mail truck pulling in and the mailman coming to the door. Uh, that was really helpful just to see exactly when he arrived and how he arrived. So that was just something to think about as we're working through the rest of this process. Now right here, you've got two options for how to uh, manage space basically on your uh, drive here. So uh, one option, and you can actually do both of these things at the same time, uh, is to keep the files within X number of days. So right now this is set to keep my recordings for 30 days. So when we get to day 30, uh, day one's videos from 30 days ago will get erased and then it will keep recording. So basically it just keeps rolling, uh, rolling through and keeping 30 days back 
uh, as you're going. So it'll again, it'll erase things from uh, 30 days ago and then continuously recording uh, as we move forward. So you can do something like that. Another option is you can limit the physical size of the recording. So you could say, when we get to 10 gigabytes of storage, uh, begin erasing the older stuff so that we can just stay within those file limits. And those are decisions you have to make based on what your particular situation is. Uh, my preference is actually just to keep 30 days worth of recordings and uh, make sure that I have enough sp uh, space on the drive to accommodate that. Uh, you can make some estimates by clicking on this button here to figure out exactly what 30 days of recordings means for disk space. Uh, and you can maybe run that to kind of get a better idea as to how much you can store uh, based on what you currently have. And if you're using this to uh, store files as well, you probably want to think about how much space you want to have available for other things on the drive too. So a lot of things to think about and uh, to calculate here. And this will again vary based on uh, the kind of recording you're making, the resolution, how many cameras you have. Uh, so those are all the things that go into uh, setting up your surveillance station. But the good news is you can go in and kind of adjust this over time uh, if you need to do that. You also have the option here of customizing the folder name and the file name prefix. So I could say uh, we're going to maybe uh, append living room to the front of every file before uh, it is written to the disk. So I, if I want to go in and look at these files manually, I know exactly which camera I'm looking at. And then, of course, we can set uh, where those recordings go to. So that is uh, the recording section. Uh, live view settings are pretty self self-explanatory here. So the video source, we uh, I like to just have a go from surveillance station, but you can also feed directly from the camera. So any uh, adjustments you've done to the picture within uh, surveillance station would come through this way, or you can just get the raw image from the camera. Uh, the stream setting I have right now set to balance, which is the lower resolution setting, but I can, of course, set that to high quality uh, because I'm maybe I'm in my house looking at the live view uh, on my computer. But if I'm away from home, I can change the settings for what the mobile app will see. So maybe on my phone, I just want to get the 640 by 480 version that we configured earlier so I can set the mobile version to use a lower resolution playback uh, when I am looking at the live view there. And we also have advanced live view, which allows you to maybe bump up the resolution if you get a notification of an event. So for example, if I uh, set this to event detection and say anytime something happens in front of my camera, uh, even if I'm on mobile, switch me up to the higher resolution so I can get a good idea as to what's going on when I'm on the road. So they thought a lot about uh, some of the scenarios where you might want to uh, get something a little higher resolution if something uh, crazy is happening on your network. Now more advanced cameras have some settings you can configure inside of the optimization screen here. And uh, my camera doesn't support any of these things, but if your camera does, you can do things like mirror and flip and rotate and do some exposure controls. Uh, but one thing you might want to do, especially if you have a cheaper camera, is to go over to advanced in the optimization screen and click on enable camera force restart. And what that'll do uh, for those cheap cameras that might lock up after two weeks or something, you can have it uh, reset the camera every night at a certain time uh, so that you can always make sure that that memory is just kind of flushed out and that camera will keep working. So you can set up an event uh, to trigger every time that happens. So now that we've got the camera configured, I'm going to click on save here and we'll move on to some other features. All right, so we've got our two cameras now set up and connected to our disk station here, but uh, maybe I want to go in and actually see what's going on just as a live view while I'm sitting down here in my basement studio. So I can click on live now and if I do that, I'll get an automatic uh, grid view of each of the cameras that we currently have connected to my system. So on the right here, we have uh, the living room. On the left here, I have the front door. And what's cool is that because I've installed pan, tilt, and zoom cameras, I can actually make those camera controls happen here just by uh, clicking on portions of the screen to move the camera around. Now, you may not be satisfied with the uh, layout I have right here, so there are ways to customize that. So right now, it's just on the automatic one. It's got two cameras, and it gives us uh, four available spots. But uh, maybe I want something a little more customized for what I'm doing. So I can go into uh, this management link here. I'll click on it again so you can see it. Uh, and that will pull up this menu here. I can click on the plus button and I've got some customized layouts that I can use to uh, configure things. So maybe I just want a, a single one-up view of the front door. So I'm going to maybe just put the front door in there. And I'm going to call this one front door and I'm going to save this one. And what I'm going to do now is add another one called living room. And then again, I'm just going to have the living room camera uh, be the, the sole camera on that option there. And so I'm going to take that living room camera, just drag it over there. And I'm going to click save again. So now I've got two different options here that I can switch between. So if I go uh, close that menu and then go over here to front door, I now have the front door front and center, or I can switch over to the living room, uh, or I can go over to auto. And even though I'm only looking at uh, one, for example, in this instance, it's still recording the other camera. I'm just choosing to look at this one uh, close up. And again, I can still do all of those same controls I did before with the pan, tilt, and zoom. 
And of course, I can always go back to my auto mode here if I just want to have a standard layout. You can also zoom in on an individual camera just by double clicking on that camera's image in your layout. Uh, you can also have it go full screen as well if you want to have a little more screen real estate for your cameras. Right clicking will bring you back to the main screen. Uh, there's other layouts also. So for example, if you've got uh, one thing that you'd like to be a little more uh, pronounced perhaps than some of the other cameras, you can add a layout maybe like this one where we've got uh, maybe the front door very large here and then the living room uh, smaller in that corner there. If I click on, uh, we'll call this test view and click on save here, I can then uh, close this out and go back over to our screen here and select test view where we've got a large version of the front door and a smaller one of the living room. And again, you can really go kind of nuts with this. In fact, they've got uh, options where you could have 64 cameras displayed uh, at any given time on the list here. So a lot of options for how you configure your live view. And again, it's maybe something nice you just want to have uh, left up on your screen during the course of the day to see activity happening around your home. Now, if you're recording all this stuff from multiple cameras, you probably want to play it back, and that is where the timeline comes in. And what it does is it gives you an interface very similar to the live view, except this is now all recorded content. And I can play this back in real time, or I can use this little scrubber here to uh, jump to different portions of the video. And what's cool is that uh, whenever you see one of these green tick marks, that is when one of the cameras detected some kind of motion event. So you can see uh, something happening in one camera and then see what was happening on the other cameras at the same time. And I'll give you a great example of something that you might want to do when an event occurs. So here I am about to run off with this box here. So I'm just going to click play. I'm going to be playing this back at uh, 4x speed here. And uh, you can see me now running out of the house and you'll see me actually go out the front door and down the walkway. So you can see how uh, one camera kind of feeds into the next. So if you did have something happen, you can then check every camera to see what each one picked up as that event transpired. So that is how you set up the surveillance station on your Synology NAS. And in our next video, we're going to take a closer look at motion events, how to set them up, how to uh, restrict them to certain portions of the frame of your image, how to get notifications of those events. And we're also going to look at uh, scheduling so that if you don't want your device always recording, you can set certain times of day where it doesn't. So stay tuned. Part three is coming up very soon. This is Lon Seib and thanks for watching. This channel is brought to you by my Patreon supporters. If you want to help the channel, you can by contributing as little as a dollar a month. Head over to lon.tv slash Patreon to learn more. And don't forget to subscribe. Visit lon.tv slash s.